Hello, my name is Archie. I'm in the sixth form, currently studying Spanish as one of my A-level subjects. And I'm going to be taking you through how to approach the speaking assessment in the Spanish GCSE. The oral is 25% of the GCSE, so it's really important we make these marks count. In this part of the exam, you are tested on your ability to communicate, fluency, accent, accuracy, and quality of language. Firstly, it is worth knowing how your Spanish speaking exam is going to work. This is the general format. So the exam is split into two parts. There's the role play card and the general conversation. The role play card is worth 15 marks and the general conversation is worth 30 marks. So before you go into the room, you're allowed 20 minutes in a preparation room in which you can look at the card that you're going to be tested on and you can go over in your head your different topics of general conversation. The role play card looks something like this. It is split into two sections, section A, which is easier, and section B, which is slightly more tricky. If we take this example, in section A, you are yourself and your teacher is an employee at a cafe and you're given the description that says you are on holiday in Spain with your family you go to a cafe to buy sandwiches and then you're given your script which tells you every step of how the conversation is going to go so in this case it starts by giving you two instructions to greet the employee and say what you want it could go hola quiero comprar bocadillos your teacher will then respond with the question of how many sandwiches you want which you can see in the script and because you had time to prepare already, you can say something like Quiero dos bocadillos. Then you have to listen to what your teacher says to you and say what kind of sandwiches you would like. You could say Quiero bocadillos con jamón y queso. I would like sandwiches with ham and cheese. Then afterwards, you have to say another thing that you want to buy. This could be a bottle of water, un botello de agua, a cake, un pastel, or anything else that you can think of that you could buy at a cafe. And then finally, you have to say thank you and ask for the price. Gracias y cuánto cuesta. And that is section A. Section B is slightly more tricky as we'll see with this example. So again, you are yourself this time and your teacher is your friend who is a Spanish person. And in the description, it says that you promised your friend that you would go to see their basketball game this afternoon, but you can't go. You call your friend on the phone to tell them that you cannot go to the game. So once again, you're given the context for your conversation. So you have to greet your friend and then say why you are calling. Hola. Te llamas porque no puedo ir a tu partido esta tarde. Then, after your teacher has spoken, you have to apologize and explain why you cannot come to the game. Lo siento, pero no puedo ir a tu partido porque tengo que ayudar a mi madre en casa esta tarde. Then, you say that you want to know when your friend is going to play another game and you have to ask an appropriate question to do this, which you form yourself. ¿Cuándo vas a jugar en un partido otra vez? When are you going to play in a game again? You're then told that your friend wants to stay with you after the game. Then you have to suggest two activities that you can do with your friend afterwards. So, después del partido, podemos ir al parque para jugar al fútbol o podemos ir al cine para ver un película. After the game, we can go to the park to play football or we can go to the cinema to watch a film. After this, you have to respond to a question that you do not know, so it has to be off the cuff. Evidently, section B is more difficult, but do bear in mind that you have 20 minutes to look at this card and prepare for the examination so it's not something to worry about too much. 
Quite often you will be asked to demonstrate feelings in section B, such as happiness, being angry, being sad, being surprised, being thankful, being sorry, and so on. So knowing this type of vocabulary is key to getting you those extra marks which are often dropped. So here are some examples. Do remember that the roleplay card is not your time to show off. It is the time to follow the instructions as best you can and demonstrate how well you can understand the language presented to you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you want to watch the second part of this about the general conversation part of the examination, click on the link in the description to access the next video. Thanks for watching and good luck.